All right, let's get ready for the Word of God. Yep, that's right, preach the Word. I know everybody's still kind of getting in their seats there. to make sure I know how to use this. All right. All right. Are we ready? Now it's time to focus on the things of God. Let us open with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, It is through your loving Son, Jesus Christ, that we come to you this afternoon. We know that you've done so much for us, that you have been with us and are going to be with us throughout this week to help us. Please help us to have open hearts so that we may put more of your word into our hearts, that we may grow in your word, that we may be better servants for you, that we may better in our everyday life and service to you. We also want to ask that we serve you better in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the topic is Speak Life. And it looks like everybody so far, we're still alive, so that's good. All right, you know, not just today, but, but uh, every day from here on forward. So this afternoon we're going to be talking about Speak Life, the way, the truth, and the life. I want to let you know these these three things, you know, we could just talk about, for example, just the way. I could talk about that for an hour, and then maybe we talk about the truth for another hour, and then when we come to the life, we need a whole other hour to talk about that. Um, you know, I said, if we could stay here for a month, I could probably talk about, you know, the way for a month, and then keep on going, and then talk about the truth for a month, and then talk about the life for a month as well. I know there's so much... The Word of God is just overflowing and uh, and giving an explanation for what those words mean and so that we all maybe have all can have a good life. But I want to ask the question, who can lead us to the good life? Well, that's Jesus. Jesus doesn't want us to follow the way of the world. He wants us to follow the way of truth. What does that mean, the truth? That means Jesus. So if we understand these three concepts and we understand how to follow them, then we'll have a good life that's overflowing with blessing. So I'm going to try to basically summarize what the way is, what the truth is, and what the life is this afternoon. I went, I went too far there. How do I go back? Let me make sure. Uh, can you help me? Oh. Good. Thank you. Thank you for the help there. All right. I, I just double clicked there. Went too fast. All right. Hopefully, it'll cooperate the rest of the way. So, so our passage this afternoon is from John chapter 14, verse 6. And I'm sure you know that very well. You know, that that's probably a memory, memory verse that you remember from when you were kids. So Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, I'm the life. He said, no man, no, no man can come to the Father but by me. You know, you think about 
a lot of people today will want to have a better way. I just want to follow my way. You know, honestly, there's no man on earth that can get us to the next life. The only one who can bring us to the Father is Jesus. I'm not going to be able to get there by myself. I have to go through him to meet the Father. Think about uh, what he says about what we've talked about with the concept of light. You know, if uh, if there's a way and uh, the, the lights are out and you're trying to drive there, you're not going to be able to see where you're going. You're not going to know that you're actually following the way. You need to make sure that to go to the Father, you're going through the right individual. Jesus assured us that he knows the way to heaven. You know, if I'm just going to try to guess and go, hmm, how do I get to heaven? Well, you know, I don't have to guess because Jesus knows. Jesus is from heaven, and he came to earth. He was born as a man, and he grew up, and, and he already knows the way back to heaven. I need to depend on Jesus. So I want to focus first on what it means to be that Jesus is the way. So when you think about the way, what, what does that mean? You think about it as you're going along, if you're getting directions to some place, uh, you may be looking at a map or something, trying to figure out how you're going to get to your eventual destination, to whatever uh, point you're trying to reach. You're trying to get there. You need to understand uh, from the map the way to get there. The Bible tells us that the way to God is through Jesus Christ. Let's turn back and uh, and look at the book of Isaiah. We kind of need to back up a little bit uh, to add a little bit of context to understand from Isaiah 35, verse 8. The prophet Isaiah said in the Old Testament, as we read this passage, there will be a road there. This highway will be called the Holy Road. Evil people will not be allowed to walk on that road. No fools will walk on it. Only good people will walk there. So what that means is this is a place that you can't walk. It's a road you can't continue on if you're not living the right way. It's not permitted for those people who are living in sin to be able to take advantage of that opportunity. They can't. John chapter 6, verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. As you have the words of eternal life. And once again, showing that Jesus is the way. First Peter chapter 2, verse 21 says, This is what you were chosen to do. Christ gave you an example to follow. He suffered for you 
So you should do the same as he did. You know, we read in the Gospels about all the people that Jesus went out to, that he had contact with, and that he worked with. Um, he was involved in their lives and all kinds of, of different people and different experiences. You know, as we all grow, have grown up, we've all been through very different kinds of experiences. You know, sometimes our experiences aren't good ones. Well, we do the wrong thing. And that can, that can give a positive result, but we don't want to rely on our own experiences and our own thoughts to be able to get us where we want to go. So looking at this, wondering, uh, what does this have to do with the GPS here? You might all actually have GPSs in the car. Who has a GPS in their car? Why? Helps us cut down our time when we're going around. We don't have to look and try to search for where we're going. The GPS is a huge help to get us where we want to go. I remember when I was younger, we'd go and we'd stop at a gas station and uh, we'd have to ask for directions at the gas station. They'd give us directions, you know, okay, thank you. And then we go, and, and uh, well, what if the gas station attendant gave me the wrong directions? Uh, well, now I've got to go stop at another gas station and go ask them until finally we arrive at where we're going to go. And that took so much extra time, you know. Do you, I mean, maybe you all have some of the same experiences. And now I have the GPS in the car, and it took a little while to be able to figure out how to do it, and it's got this path that, you know, it, it kind of makes me feel like I'm a little baby, you know, he's pulling me along in the stroller, all right, go here, go here, but you know what, I'm honestly really thankful for that, because there's been so many places where, I, where I've needed it, let me tell you, just coming down to workshop on Sunday afternoon, we were going on I-40, and, uh, you know, we stay on I-40 for a really long time. And uh, the GPS all of a sudden told me to take an exit. I said, I'm uh, not really sure. It's right up close. I go, okay. Okay, I go and I take this exit. I go, I'm, why, why am I going to take this exit? You know, this small road. And my, and my wife nudges me. goes, why did you do that? Why did you do that? I said, well, the GPS told me to. I said, that GPS is just making things up. It doesn't know where it's going. And so, you know, I-40 is going to be the fastest. We're going on this little access road. So, well, let's just follow it a little ways. And we went down just a little way, and then we saw I-40 was all the way backed up. Traffic was at a standstill, and I realized something had happened, and the GPS told me another route to go. And so I was able to, to go on and end up on this little dirt road as I'm just uh, going along, and then I go, ha-ha, I beat you. And then I just keep on going down the road until I finally come back on on I-40 after uh, whatever was going on, and then I kept going. Turns out there was an 18-wheeler that had uh, had jackknifed, and so I was very thankful for that GPS, you know. Um, it wasn't just, you know, my if I'd gone and just had my own idea about how to get there, I might have gotten in trouble. The GPS showed me the way, and that was amazing. So we know Jesus is the way. He is the way, and he's the one who can lead us to heaven. Uh, sinful people go, you know what, I can do it myself. I can be able to get there. This right here, that's still the same GPS, right? Right? So let's go ahead and put in the instructions for how to get to heaven, right? We can do it ourselves, right? So, so yeah, let's go ahead and let's tell GPS, I want to go to heaven. Okay, where, you know, where is it going to go? You know, I'm here in Lubbock right now, 
and uh, I'm ready to leave, so let's go to heaven. So how are you going to type that out? Um, go to heaven. What are you going to What are you going to do? How are you going to tell that GPS to get you there? <laughs> well, you have to wait till the end of your life, but you have any idea? You go. You go. All right. Let's get to the pearly gate. Hmm. Well, the Bible says you know there's going to be a pearly gate, right? Okay, we're going to go to the pearly gate in heaven. Is it going to give me the way to go to heaven? Nope. Nope. You may rely on GPS a lot, but it ain't going to help you out this time. No. We don't know the way. Nothing that we can make is going to know the way. You know, we can know that the Bible gives us the way. Uh, and all these other devices, and all these other uh, thoughts and opinions aren't going to lead us to heaven. That's what we need the truth for, God's word. We, we don't know everything. Let's see this. John 14, verse 3 says, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself. that where I am, you may be also. So my little Garmin GPS can't do that. Can't, can't lead me to heaven. But Jesus has shown the way to the holy road. Think of, think of it like that. And without following him, we're not going to be on that road. We're not going to be on that path. If we follow the way that Jesus outlines and how he says to live our lives, we follow in his footsteps and do the things that he tells us to, it's going to lead us on to that eternal life. We're going to move on now. I, I know my time's limited, so I'm trying to make sure we get all, through all this. Jesus is the truth. I found something interesting. I was reading this from the New King James Version, but the way that this is put out in the New Testament, there's 76 times. 76 times where it has this phrase right here, I tell you the truth. It's like a, a warning to people. You know, we read it and we go, well, it just kind of goes over our head. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself, he is truth. And it's so clear. I talked about this a little bit in yesterday's class that I presented. But you know, we'll look back and how it started with Moses, right? Moses received the Ten Commandments and uh, receives those from God, brings them back to the people. Well, when Jesus came and he, he died to cover our sins and, and he had his teachings, now we pick up those things the things that Jesus already taught. And, and in all of the teachings of Jesus, it is entirely true. Everything he ever said is true. You are not going to find anything 
that came of his own imagination, anything where he's caught in a lie, any time where he says anything that is re- even remotely untrue. Every bit of it is truth. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. John 1, verse 17. We know Moses, the Old Testament, the old law has been done away with. Just like we read in Colossians 2, verses 14, 15. No talk about when Jesus was crucified on the cross. Remember, and they, they mocked him, they nailed him to the cross and left him up there. When he died, his blood covered the sins of the world. But when he died on that cross, he also did away with the old law. The new law came into existence. That's how the new commandment started to come up, a new covenant. You know, Moses, the things that he received from God, they were good, of course. But when it comes to all truth, that is given to us by Jesus Christ. from John chapter 1 verse 18 which says we know no one has seen God at any time the only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father he has explained him We know about when Jesus was born and he came to earth and he lived on this earth. You know, maybe we have the question, what did Jesus look like? You know, what what did he look like as a baby? You know, I bet you have probably pictures up, uh, baby pictures of your kids, of your grandkids even. You know, you might have them up on your mail place. You know, uh, when you open up your Bibles, uh, does anybody know where the original baby picture of Jesus is? No? It's not in there? Yeah, well, obviously there's no no camera back then. You know, you can just imagine a picture of Jesus or himself and try to imagine what that might look like. But, you know, if you have in your Bibles a picture that's supposed to be kind of an idea of what Jesus looked like, well, if you went to another country, you probably have a different picture in a Bible of what somebody thinks about. You know? You know, we have no evidence as to what exactly Jesus looked like. There's nothing there to give us an idea of what he would have looked like. But what he looked like really doesn't matter. It's not something that's important. I wonder if we ask Jesus, what does the Heavenly Father look like? You know, think about what or what Jesus would have looked like in heaven as spirit. I, I, how would we explain what that looks like? I mean, he came to earth as a baby and grew up. You know, if we ask him, say, what does God look like? And Jesus would say, you see me? You have seen the Father. I think so, like Father, like Son, they looked exactly alike. No, but but in terms of their personality, in the terms that Jesus never did anything wrong, 
Like he never lied. He never did anything wrong. You know, his, per- his personality was such that it was exactly like the Father. The two were perfectly alike. I know you see your friends and your family, and, you know, uh, when you see a new baby, you go, oh, oh, he looks like his, mo- his dad, or, or she looks like her mom. And uh, we kind of look around and try to figure out who they look like, you know. Uh, they bring all the uh, kids over. You know, think about my kids. I have Francis and Yvonne and Dudley. And um, I'm going to talk about that stuff for a second. Sometimes I call out for one of the kids uh, and, uh, you know, call out the wrong name. I go, uh, okay, okay. You know, say, <laughs> what are you mad at me about? It was them who did it. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me get the right kid, you know. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, I, I can just keep going until, uh, until I get the right one to, to come over to me, you know. In the same same kind of way, you know, maybe you, you, uh, I uh, see, see somebody from behind and they think of some, someone else. You can, uh, if you see Jesus, Jesus would be exactly like the Father. Not necessarily in looks, but in how he acted in his personality and everything. You know, no one has seen the Father. And you know, we start to imagine, what, what does God look like? Well, that's not important. That's not important. You know, Jesus, he had many, many different names. He was the Messiah, he Jesus, he's our Savior, he's the Christ, you know. And all of those are just such beautiful names that you can come up with. They're, they're so wonderful. Yeah. Matthew 3, verse 3 says, For this is he that was spoken of the prophet Isaiah saying, The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. means make sure that, that there is truth in the path. You know, you don't want a, a, a crooked path that goes off to the right or to the left. You know, something that is straight, something that would be truth. It's always going to keep going the same direction. It's going to be perfect. Think about it the same way as having the, the way being holy, the way that we need to follow. And third, we also know that Jesus is life. I know in all of our classes, we've been talking about uh, speak life, speak life. If I want to lead a good life, it needs to be through the word of God. We need to follow Jesus as the way. I want to follow in his footsteps because he is the one that has life. Jesus taught and said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, He shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. (laughs) 
I want to share with you a, a couple of examples, and maybe some of you know the story. Um, I'm sure some of you know the story about Lazarus, right? After Lazarus died, the, his sisters laid him down in the tomb. And they had sent a messenger to go find Jesus and bring Jesus back. Please bring Jesus back quickly so that he might be alive. When Lazarus was still alive, they sent this messenger off for Jesus to bring him back when he was just sick so that Jesus might heal Lazarus. And Martha said to Jesus, says, we, we begged you to come when Lazarus was still sick to come save his life before he died. And Jesus was saying, I, I still have the work of God to do. You know, it, it's not, uh, calling Jesus is not like, a, you know, calling 911 where immediately he's going to be able to respond right then and you're going to be able to bring an ambulance or something like if somebody here got hurt and uh, able to save their life that way, you know, um, make sure that they can make it. But Jesus had told the messenger, he said, I, I'm going to go. I'd like to add something. This is, you know, this is my own thought. You know, Jesus didn't come immediately when he heard that Lazarus was sick. You know, and Lazarus uh, died. Jesus still had not left, had not come. What took him so long? What took Jesus so long? Well, by the time he got there, they were already prepared his body They'd already wrapped him up as as was their custom. And they'd laid him in the tomb. Hold that thought for a, a second. Uh, when I went on a, a trip over there, went to the they said, look at this place called the tomb of Lazarus, where uh where you would think it would be. You know, I went in there, and uh, they said this. They think this is the place where Lazarus was was laying in there. Some some people had a different opinion on where the tomb was. You know, but you you go in there and go all the way down and down and down. You go all the way down deep in these tombs, all the way to the bottom. They were they were very deep. say well Lazarus would have been there before you know I go down the, these steps and stuff and uh, you know the Bible doesn't really explain exactly about what the tomb would have looked like but history tells us you know what it would have looked like went down this place and you say okay I get kind of the idea of what it would have looked like you know so just assuming that actually really is the place we don't know for sure but assuming that really was the place you know they, they brought him to the tomb. You know, uh, Martha comes and meets him crying, saying, Look, Lord, if you had been here, then, G then Lazarus would still be alive. You could have saved his life. And that just... That just impacted Jesus so deeply. That's the only time we read of him um, in this situation. We read that short verse in the Bible that Jesus wept. And it says, He is not dead, but he is asleep. And then he has to be led to the place where he was laid. And then Jesus speaks for Lazarus to come forward. And 
think about it. how could Jesus have brought Lazarus back to life after he had been laid down in a tomb for for four days and you think about what happens to your body after four days what happens to your brain what happens to your blood and it's not pumping for four days not he hasn't breathed in four days you know I mean after just a couple minutes without breathing then uh, you're going to lose all brain function completely I mean it's gone and it's been four days he's been wrapped up so you know there there'd be no way for him to even breathe had he actually just been asleep you know he's um one of these bandages and Jesus says to him wake up you can just imagine the the relief of the the sisters and everyone is in complete and total shock as to how Jesus could have done that how he could have brought Lazarus back to life you know and Jesus showed us that we can depend him depend on him for everything in our life you know well that's impossible nothing is impossible with God be all these other concerns that we have in life and things that that come up to life come up in life but Jesus can do anything for us he can take care of anything that's going on in life we know that he's risen the dead he's made the lame to walk and and, you know it There are those who don't believe in the things that Jesus has said, don't believe in the things that Jesus has done, and they are looking for their own way, for the way that they want, that's going to give their own joy in their lives. Jesus has already showed us the way, but others don't want to walk that way. How do we have the life? By following Jesus. I know that the future is bright for us because we have a a place to go after we die with Jesus. The path that he has already prepared, the way that he's prepared for us to go to the place that we can't even fully imagine how amazing and how beautiful it's going to be. It's going to be a million times better than we could even imagine. There's going to be no problems there. There's going to be no difficulties It's only going to be happiness. But then those who love the world and just enjoy themselves now, there's going to come a day when they say, no, that path is for those who love God and walk with him. The way of the world is the path to destruction. Sometimes there might be things, I know I know we can have an enjoyable life following after Christ, but sometimes there might be things that we need to uh, be able to suffer through because we're looking for a beautiful home, a life that's forever, and a reward from Jesus Christ. You know, we think about, well, uh, maybe, maybe if uh, someone here is focused on earthly rewards, well, hey, I, I, I won a million dollars in the lottery. Well, someday that's not going to be enough. There's going to be a blessing that comes someday that's so much better than anything like that. The only way we can receive it, though, is through our Lord Jesus. We also know Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He says this in John chapter 6, verse 35, which reads, 
And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Do you remember when uh, Jesus was tempted by the devil when he went and fasted for 40 days and nights, had nothing to eat during that time, nothing, you know, nothing to drink? You can just imagine how thirsty he would be, how hungry he would be. And, and Satan said, let's turn these rocks to bread. And you can do it, and then you can eat. And Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. You know, I think many of us would go, Okay, I can't take this anymore. I've got to get something to eat. Could you imagine if, if that had actually happened? If that's what Jesus had done? Well, this world will be doomed forever. I'm so thankful to Jesus because he saved us. That he was willing to suffer for us like that. And he's done so many things for us. He suffered for us that way he might give us this gift, this reward of heaven. I think this is a very simple and clear way to put it. Jesus is the resurrection. And you know, someday, each and every one of us will die. Or, well, we never know what will happen. We'll either die or Jesus will come down on the day of judgment. You know, we might not actually experience death in that way. But in some way, we will die. But after that, we're going to live. But when we die, we can say, you know, he's, he's not really dead. He's just asleep because someday he's going to get up. Someday each and every one of us will also get up. John chapter 1 verse 4 tells us, In him there was life, and that life was a light. For the people of the world. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven... given to mankind by which we must be saved. Just one name. Just one name. That's Jesus our Lord. No one else can give us that. Now, you know, people might give different answers. People might think of different things. There's always been discussions and debates in the world about it. There have been different things brought up, different uh, ideas of how we could be saved would be different than this, but all of them come from man. They don't come from God. be a, a situation where you, you know you need to bring somebody to uh, the U.S. Embassy take care of them. You 
my list of things to put up. But I know that there's this uh, concept, you know, you have terrorists who go out there and they'll put on suicide vests. They'll go somewhere loaded up with dynamite and blow themselves up, maybe go to a U.S. embassy and, and, and do that because they think that that way is going to get them to heaven. They think that if they do that, then they're going to be able to find the way to eternal life. But then they're going to find out that that is not the way to eternal life. That's a man-made idea. Acts chapter 5, verse 31 says, Jesus is the one God honored by giving him a place at his right side. He made him our leader. He made him give all the people of Israel the opportunity to change and turn back to the Lord. And I know many of you are are working to do the right thing, but you know there's always something we can do better. There's always something we can evaluate our lives and say, that doesn't need to be there and take it out. To follow the truth just a little bit better and say, Lord, I, I know I've done wrong here. Let me follow the truth just a little bit better so that we can end up in the blessed hands of our Lord. You know, we, we are disciples of Jesus, right? So let us keep growing in our faith. Tomorrow's class, uh, I have another lesson tomorrow afternoon, and that's what's going to be on Speak Life to the Disciple. So thank you for your attention. Any, wait, any questions? Are there any questions or anything? Thank you. Any questions? Any discussion? I think we got time. Oh, I got a question over here. We understand that God wants people to know Jesus. We need to understand about Jesus and follow his word. But think about back in the beginning... that from the beginning the plan for Jesus was for him to be like others was someone that we can relate to someone that we can be comfortable with because we can look at him and understand that he knows about our life as well yes yes that's true You know, kind of back to your idea about the, uh, the terrorists or the suicide bombers. You know, I'd, I'd like to know how they respond to, you know, don't, thou shalt not kill in that verse. I, I know that's right. It's, it's really hard to understand some people and, and some of the things that they, they think. And, you know, that's why it's important to take out the, carry out the Great Commission and go into all the world teaching all people. We really need to do that. You know, we, we all know the world is full of trouble. America as well, definitely. We know, we were talking about this earlier, that the size of the church is starting to dwindle. There's false doctrine that's being taught. You know, teaching things. You can go to heaven this way, and it's not really the way that Jesus said. You know, and, that, and that's you know, also in there, there's people believe in this holy war idea, and there's more and more people growing in that, in that theology, you know. 
it's, it's hard to get them to stop. And things are just getting worse and worse. You know, the world uh, just continues to get worse. But I, I want us all to still continue to think positive. Because, you know, if you get one person, you get one soul, then that is an incredible thing. You imagine for that one person, that is amazing. That is wonderful for them. Any more? Any other questions or anything like that? You know, all right, maybe we're, you know, going once, going twice, three times, sold. All right, thank you very much.